You can search the internet for numerous comeback stories, and there are a lot, both past and present. From Abraham Lincoln to Ulysses S. Grant to Kurt Warner, Robert Downey Jr. But you know who has the best comeback story of all time? Jesus. I mean, think about it. His life, death, and resurrection literally changed the course of human history. He was guilty of no crime, only did good while on earth, yet he was betrayed and crucified. There is no greater setback than to be cruelly and unjustly killed. But what a comeback! Three days later, he rose from the grave. He scored the ultimate victory over death and sin, and the best news of it all, he brought us along with him. Once you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He lives in you. He'll never leave you, and all things are possible when you believe in Him. According to what the Bible says, you can't lose for winning. So when it comes to emulating comeback stories and you want to emulate Jesus, how do you go about doing that? How do you create your own comeback story? How do you dare to dream again after a failure? Well, there are a few keys to keep in mind. Hello, Weirdos! I'm Pastor Darren. Welcome to the Church of the Undead. Here in the Church of the Undead, I can share ideas which are relevant to those who suffer with depression, need some encouragement, and for those who love or are just curious about the God of the Bible. And it doesn't matter if you are a weirdo in Christ or just a weirdo, everybody's welcome here at the Church of the Undead. And I use the word undead because here we are dead to sin and alive in Christ. If you want to join this weirdo congregation, just click that subscribe or follow button and visit us online at WeirdDarkness.com slash church. Full disclosure, I might use the term pastor because I've branded this feature as a church, but I do not have a theology degree, nor did I ever go to Bible college. I'm just a guy who gave his life to Christ in 1989 and has tried to walk the walk ever since, and has stumbled a lot along the way. Because, like everybody else, I am an imperfect, heavily flawed human being. So please don't take what I say as gospel. Dig into God's Word yourself for confirmation, inspiration, and revelation. That being said, welcome to the Church of the Undead. This week's message is actually a Bible study I found in my YouVersion Bible app. It's a three-day Bible study. I'm going to share the whole thing with you here. It's written by Karen Jensen Salisbury, and it's actually an excerpt from Karen's book, Why God Why? What to Do When Life Doesn't Make Sense. And I will leave a link to that book in the episode description. So if you like what you're about to hear, you can get more of it through Karen's book. So how do you make a comeback? Well, first, you make a choice. At some point in life, everyone has suffered disappointment or lost a dream. When that happens, you have to make a choice. You can either choose to set up camp in the land of disappointment and regret, spending all your time thinking about your failure or the wrong that's been done to you, or you can choose to get up and dream another dream. We've probably all heard the analogy that when you fall off a horse, the thing you got to do is get right back up on that horse and ride. If you don't, you'll be afraid to ride, and the horse will think he's won. God has not given you the spirit of fear, so don't let it take root in your heart, but face your fear and the power of God's might. Don't let the devil think that he's won. Decide to get up. Decide to get up. When you know your place in Christ, you have the supernatural strength and determination to do it. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Mark 9.23 says, What do you mean, if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. When you've suffered a setback, once you've made a choice to get back up and go again, there are two more keys to making your comeback. First, try again. Be willing to try again. Get back on that horse and ride. Your safety net is in place. You've not lost your place in Christ. He's still greater in you than anything in the world. 1 John 4 verse 4. 
It truly doesn't matter how many times we fall down. All that matters is how many times we get up again. You just got to get up one more time than you fall down. Remember, all God's power and love are still backing you. All the resources of heaven are still available to you. And number two, get to work. Father John Maxwell once said, dreams don't work unless you do. That means every day you need to throw back the covers, get out of bed, put one foot in front of the other, and move on with life. Do something in the direction of your new dream, even if it's just a small step. Nothing happens when we do nothing. James 1 verse 22 instructs us to be doers of the word, not hearers only. When we only hear and don't act on what we hear, the Bible says that we're living in deception. I don't want to do that. Neither do you. The only people that the word works for are those who do it. It takes effort to make a comeback and dream another dream. But you can do it. Get to work today. The Holy Spirit will guide you. Ask Him what your first step should be. Then be willing to step out and do it. 1 John 4 verse 4 but you belong to God, my dear children. You've already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. And James 1.22, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Then go for it. When you've had a setback, it's easy to get gun shy to be tormented with thoughts of your failure or trauma so that you're afraid to try again. Yes, making a comeback will take some guts, but you have that in Christ. Here's your final key. Be brave. People might say that you're crazy or rain on your parade. All of these so-called facts might say your dream is impossible. But be brave and move forward anyway. History is full of stories about people who went for it against all odds. The phrases, don't be afraid and fear not, appear in the Bible anywhere between 150 and up to 365 times, depending on the translation you're reading. 365 times, that's one for every day of the year. I have not counted them personally, so I don't know the total for sure, but you get the point. The Bible repeatedly tells us not to be afraid. That's because God doesn't want you to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid of people, failure, or loss because God is on your side, and if He's with you, nothing else matters. So be brave. Tell yourself you're brave. Make this declaration out loud in agreement with the Bible, saying, When I have a setback, I am determined to put it behind me and make a comeback. I make a choice to get back up and dream another dream. I will get to work and try again. I'm not afraid, because all the resources of heaven are still available to me. I'm a victory going somewhere to happen. Take action today. Take some time to dream again. Write down some best-case scenarios. And then pray and ask God for the next step in your comeback. And go for it. Be willing to dive in where the Holy Spirit leads you. Never forget this, because of your position in Christ, you are a victory going somewhere to happen. Romans 8.31 What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Again, if you like what you just heard, it's actually an excerpt from the book, Why God Why? What to Do When Life Doesn't Make Sense from Karen Jensen Salisbury and I've placed a link to that book in the episode notes. If you like what you heard, share this episode with others who you think might also like it. Maybe the person you share it with will want to join this weirdo congregation too. To join this weirdo family yourself, find us on Facebook, listen to previous messages, even find out how to join me in my daily Bible studies, visit WeirdDarkness.com slash church. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash church. You can find the sources I used for this week's message in the show notes. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me, weirdos, and until next time, Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless.